My name is Macy Wolfe, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Michigan. I study race and gender uh, and mathematics learning. And so black girls are my particular focus. So they will, um, they will be very present in this presentation, as you will see. My, provo uh, my provocation is titled, Get On Up From The Page, The Possibilities, Problems, Phantasms, and Politics of Representation of Black Girls in Mathematics Education. And um, I wanted to start my provocation with a pitch for some new products. So I have a business um, for the black girl in your life. So I have this pitch. Are you tired of black girls in your life being openly disrespected, microaggressed, or physically assaulted in their mathematics class? Well, have no fear. Actually, use your fear to consider these fine new products for black girl mathematical enterprises. So, for a low-cost solution for your black girl who enjoys authoring her own mathematical ideas, consider the Snatch It Pencil. If a black girl's math teacher tries to take a pencil from her hand, the shared mathematical authority matching pages, and voila, there are two pencils, not just one. Don't worry about your daughter coming home with someone else's mathematical ideas. She is protected against overbearing teacher's mathematical authority. Of course, one of our higher-end products is the Black Girl Concierge Mathematical Watch. Mathematical Watch, you say that 10 times fast. <laughs> This device is like Alexa, constantly taking voice recordings and assessing the racial and gender-based threat to the mathematics classroom. Your black girl can also make um, manual adjustments and tell them watch is effectively calibrated. These strategies provide haptic feedback, just a little shake, to support your black girl in responding to her math class environment. If the black girl in your life is spending too much time processing racialized and gendered ex experiences, offload that cognitive work to the black girl concierge watch and help her save that cognitive energy for the mathematics. Finally, and for our wealthier black girl clientele, <laughs> let me share the black girl matchable box. Although originally designed to protect children in suburbs from school shootings, this bullet-resistant box protects the black girl you love from assaults from security resource officers and the surveillance of her dress and hair. It has a voice modulator that changes the tonal quality of the black girl voice so they are not perceived as a challenge to their teacher's authority. A high quality screen projects the classroom math problems, and don't look at those math problems, they're not real. And the system <laughs> also sends math problems to your girl's phone to keep her focused. The math box centers the black girl's mind and keeps her body safe. And if you call now, we will throw in the snatch it pencil when you purchase your concierge watch for four small payments. <laughs> now this provocation, I don't have a business, y'all. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> this provocation is built around these questions of re-representing the experiences of black girls in mathematics classrooms. What is our ability as a field to see, feel, and care for black girls? And while black girls serve as my personal focus, by attending to black girlhood, I specifically, I truly believe we can address some broader challenges in the field. Through this sales pitch, I wanted to invite you into a social technical imaginary. Ruha Benjamin, an African American studies professor at Princeton University, investigates the social dimensions of science and technology and calls us to examine not only how the technical and social components of design are intertwined, but also imagines how they might be configured differently. Each of these products imagines a particular social arrangement of black girls in relation to everyday tools, their teachers, and the math content. My argument is for the field to reconsider the modalities of re-representing children's experiences in mathematics classrooms. This is a call for us to get up on up from the page, the written word where black girls languish, and into a material world and a virtual world with <laughs> art-based design. This move to new modalities of re-representation is especially true of particular groups like black girls who have been invisibilized and rendered to the margins of care. I'm arguing that it is not enough for us, particularly I'm speaking to critical uh, scholars in the, the field, to identify problematic experiences and the phenomenological realities of marginalized children, but to begin designing for their futures. This discourse of inequity and justice, however righteous, and I do believe it is righteous, is beginning to fall in deaf ears. How many of you are tired of DEI? My goodness. Um, diversity, equity, inclusion. 
Um, I'm calling for a revolution, not of our research theory or our method, but a revolution of re-representation to engage differently. We need new So in this provocation, I'm introducing you to two paradigms of design that can include both affirmative design and critical design. Affirmative design seeks to leverage existing technologies such as VR to express research findings and the problems, whereas critical design, and in this I include speculative design, allows us to seek solutions for debate, provocation, and to make us think, and I argue to make us feel. So these are some examples of affirmative design. On your left, you'll see the I am a man, the uh, worker sanitation uh, strike. Um, that it's a virtual reality experience where Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. The other, on the right-hand side, is a virtual reality experience to reform domestic abusers so they experience how women feel domestic abuse. And then I want to give you a couple of examples of critical and speculative design. So in the middle, that is done in maybe who have um, been the kind of um, people who are pushing forward with this idea of speculative design who um, came up with this mask so that we could find food in the future because we're going to have to be able to eat non-human food just like chickens have gizzards and turkeys have gizzards. We're going to have to develop gizzards of our own. So they're trying to make us think about how do we manipulate um, ourselves and not necessarily our environment. So these are examples. Um, my own work has sought to create audio-based uh, experiences. This is an example of affirmative design now um, related to mathematics education um, to allow to show how black girls navigate their hallways and um, their racialized and gendered experiences and age-based experiences. And so what you see on the screen is a sound map of this audio-based experiences. Our construction of these experiences, um, uh, myself and several students at the University of Michigan Stamp School of Art, maintain the social, technical, and economic values of virtual reality. We weren't shifting anything, we were just re-representing something. Um, and this caused me to wrestle with this idea of phantasm, which I thank Nero for introducing me to. So how black girls live in the US social imaginary, we found that affirmative design led us into really problematic places of digital minstrelsy, similar to the challenges of when we try to represent black girls on a page, which is something that I'm trying to do in my own work, and I get so much feedback around the, the limit, limitations of that. So I found myself moving towards less didactic forms of representations for the sake of expressing the literature about black girls in math. I am now in a place for designing for black girls' futures and creating meeting spaces to engage users differently. So I turn to critical design. The snatch of pencil is one example um, of, of this intersubjectivity to reimagine the distribution of mathematical authority. It's not that I'm going to build this, I'm just trying to imagine, and I'm asking you to imagine with me. Um, it's a writing tool that can mediate both bodies and mathematical thinking and doing. The concierge watch is an example of speculative design. The watch helps us imagine a future in which the prevalence of voice recording can assess racial, epistemic, verbal, and perhaps even physical abuse. The haptic responses, those little buzzes that you feel on your watch or in your, on your phone, can support the relational labor of learning in racialized and gendered spaces. Um, the concierge watch can calculate risks for sharing their emerging math conceptions or send messages when and if they experience stereotype threat in a test situation. You might be thinking, well, why this is not the solution? And that's the exact point of this provocation, is what would it then mean to design for black girls in mathematics context? Um, so if you're walking away arguing about the concierge watch, I've, I've done my job today. Um, <laughs> And so speculative design pushes us to imagine a future rather than presenting, and this is Matt Malpass, utopic or dystopic visions. Speculative design poses challenging statements that attempt to explore the ethical and societal implications of new science and the role of product and industrial design plays. The aim is to make scientific theories and cultural implications of science perceptible in different ways. And while all of this may seem far-fetched, it allows us to engage our imaginations around what we want mathematics classrooms to look like and simultaneously recognize these mathematics classrooms for what they are. I'd like to end with a tweet, the way we express all things now um, in our national mode of communication. 
Um, the tweet was sent um, at AOE in 27, uh, 2017 during a panel entitled Interrogating Whiteness. And as the tweet reports, there was a huge turnout for this session. There were people standing, sitting on the floor, and there was at least one person behind the projection screen, I kid you not. And I was a speaker on this panel, along with my colleagues Erica Bullock and Luis Lavia, as well as our organizer, Trevor Walburton. And the energy in the room was electric. It felt like a moment in which our field was really taking notice of race and racism. And this led me to naively believe that my session on the following day on Black Girls would um, be equally attended. So we were so interested as a community on how whiteness was operating. Surely we wanted to be we wanted to understand who whiteness was operating on. But there were only four people in the room besides the four panelists of the discussion. It was this experience that started me into exploring the re-representation of black girls. How can I make a connection to these broader audiences? And this is the fate of black girls on the page. We perish at the margins. And yes, whiteness and white interest can survive through only the empirical word and on the page, whiteness can survive. But the interest of black girls requires a different rendering. We need new modalities in mathematics for black girls to first be seen and then cared for, not because I need you to love black girls or even empathize with black girls, but for the work of design. That's what we're here for, is to design and to create learning opportunities. Um, and so it's also for us to build new black futures. Um, and before Sam comes running up here, um, I just want to end with this. I would say that design provides us a method for crafting new futures and new possibilities, and to cast off, as Angela Davis says, the very dangerous limits that have been placed on the possibility of imagining alternatives. Thank you so much. Thank you.